Since leaving the world of full-time academia more than 20 years ago, David Crystal has become one of the most prolific authorities on the subject of English. Over there, somewhere, is Dublin. Working from Holyhead in Wales, a somewhat stark corner of the British Isles, Professor Crystal's career has flourished. The reason why I write so much popular stuff on language is not because it's my idea, it's because people ask me to. Words to tell you what to do, words are working hard for you. Everybody is interested in language. Where does that word come from? What should we name our child? I wonder what that, what that name means. Would you like to come and give us a lecture? Tonight, he's on lecture. home ground in Holyhead, performing in an art centre he helped Talking to slang. establish. Vocabulary. One of the things linguists do is they go looking for slang. You're, it's a, you're a bit like a butterfly hunter with a net, you know, always going out looking for the next specimen. Hello. 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 Can you put to Rob, please? Many have known about his work for years, but some are new converts, enticed by the current debate about punctuation and grammar. In the book lover's capital of Hay on Wai, the war of words over punctuation has taken on new intensity. <laughs> How many of you have heard of Lynn Truss's Eats, Shoots and Leaves? Yes! Thank you. How many of you have read Eats, Shoots and Leaves from beginning to end? Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I thought so. Stephen Hawking syndrome, we call it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Professor Crystal calls writers like Ms. Truss pedants who don't do the English language any favours with their so-called zero-tolerance approach. Her book turned out to be a literary phenomenon, selling more than three million copies. What I wanted, I wanted to write about that feeling, the feeling that a lot of people have when they see something words wrongly used, um, punctuation wrongly used. They feel it deeply, they, and they, they're ashamed of feeling it, and they don't think they should express their, you know, this, this horror that they feel, but they do feel it. And I, I really wanted to sort of make it legitimate. I don't know what you're supposed to do with it, but you are allowed to say, that's wrong, that is wrong. In any one of Britain's bustling markets, pesky apostrophes abound. But David Crystal believes attacking that represents a value judgment on greengrocers. It's this underlying feeling I have that, that the people who, who, who don't get punctuation right are somehow inferior citizens, somehow second-class citizens, that, it, that it's their fault, that they're to blame, that it's carelessness, that it's sloppiness, that, it's, that you know, there's a blame element in here. That's what I don't like. Well, I'm obviously hurt by it. I am hurt by it if it's personal. I don't think David Crystal's personal. I think, I think what he's getting at is that um, I think the success of the book, rather than the book itself, really horrified him. That's all. Oh, I would love it if one of my books sold three million copies, you know, however many millions she sold. I mean, fat chance, really. Um, annoy me? No. Not in your opinion, she replied, mm. semicolon. Mm. I mean, we would probably put a full stop there. Yeah. Um, Lynn Truss actually... admits to being intolerant when she spots punctuation mistakes. I sometimes will change change something in a, in a shop or something where I think, you know, I can do it without anybody seeing. So you really and do I wouldn't change want to, things? Well, only two or three times in my life I've changed things, but I, I kind of think, well, oh, it says Valentine's Day, and it is, it's a possessive, you know, and I'll put a little apostrophe in. Do you in have a marker looking. in your bag now? Um, no, I don't think so. While Lynn Truss laments declining standards of English, David Crystal says he's an optimist and sees it differently. There's no such thing as a demise of language. Language changes. Language uh, moves in a different direction. Language evolves all the time. Where a lot of people see deterioration, I see expressive development, you see. You see, it, it's this zero-tolerance approach that I don't have any truck with. 
So here we are, one first folio. And for anyone as passionate as he is about English, you can find it all in Shakespeare. I think Shakespeare is wonderful, absolutely, and I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> I would spend happily my whole life exploring the language of Shakespeare because there is so much there. And the best place to experience Shakespeare isn't in a book, it's on stage. Professor Crystal's son Ben is an actor at the Globe Theatre, rebuilt as it was in Shakespeare's day. He shows us how to how to take the language that was there at the time and stretch it and bend it and push it in new directions. In a word, he shows us how to dare to do things with language. And that's one of the reasons why he's so relevant today. For David Crystal, enthusiastic school kids at the Globe are proof that Shakespeare and English are still alive and well. And that's the final word.